From Hollywood, it's time now for Bob Bailey as... Johnny Deller. Fred Wilkins at Northeastern Fidelity, Johnny. Oh, hi, Fred. I got a case for you. Remember the Alvin Summers embezzlement? Sure, he took off with 75,000 bucks about six months ago. Right. We held a bond on him, so we're stuck with it. So? This morning, a guy called from a little town on the west coast of Mexico, Santo Tomas. It was a bad connection, but I gathered he had some information on Summers and wanted somebody to go down there and talk to him. I nominated you. Then he's expecting me, huh? What's his name? I don't know. Well, how do I contact him at Santo Tomas? I'm afraid I don't know that either. You mean I'm supposed to go looking for somebody whose name I don't even know? How come he's so coy? I don't think it's a case of being coy, Johnny. Before we could get very far into the conversation, the connection was broken off at his end. Okay, Fred, I'm on my way. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Northeastern Fidelity and Bonding, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Alvin Summers matter. Item one, $220, plane, train, and boat fare to Santa Tomas, Mexico. For a town trying to be a resort, Santa Tomas shouldn't be so hard to get to. The last lap was by far the worst, a creaky twice-a-week boat from Mazatlan. And I may be wrong, but it looked to me like the only outfit interested in making a resort out of Santa Tomas was the big new hotel up on a cliff overlooking the sea, the Playa del Mar. The rest of the town just didn't seem to care. It was a sleepy fishing village. A dilapidated pier, a long curving beach with the jungle crowding in on it, and a miscellaneous assortment of adobe shacks huddled here and there, sort of digging their feet into the ground. Even at a distance, the Playa del Mar looked too rich for my purpose, so I checked in at the other hotel. It was an old two-story job in town that I found after carefully detouring around a belligerent rooster scratching up a meal in the street outside. Once inside, I couldn't help feeling that the rooster was better off. It was small, dingy, and hot. I signed the beat-up ledger that passed for a register, and a little character wearing a ragged shirt with no collar, a big grin, and a baseball cap swooped down on me and grabbed my suitcase. Right over the stairs, senor. Okay. Are you the star of the Santa Tomas Nine or something? Okay. The baseball cap. Oh, it's a first-class hotel here. I got to wear a uniform. Oh, sure. Silly of me. Uh, which way? Uh, follow me, senor. Uh, you come here to fish? Not exactly. My cousin has a very good boat to hire a cheap. Sorry. Oh. Well, if you're here on just a vacation, I'll be glad to show you the scenic sights for a very small fee. Hey, look, promoter, before you start making a career out of me, how about showing me my room? Okay, okay, senor. Here. It's a very nice room, no? Oh, sure. Hey, uh, look, can we get a little air in here? Oh, see, si, I turn on the overhead fan. It's better, no? No. There's a balcony out here? Oh, see, si, with a beautiful view of the ocean, Senor Dollar. Beautiful. The only thing I can see is the wall of that building across the alley. Ah, but if you climb up on the railing and stand in the corner and look over the roof of the building, there in the distance you see the... Beautiful. Building. Look, um... Uh... Benito, senor. Benito, I gather that in addition to a few other assorted enterprises, you're the bellboy in this establishment. I do everything. Oh, it must really be a strain. Oh, see, I'm always a straining. Been in Santa Tomas long? Si, senor. Too long. Have you heard my name mentioned around town lately? Anybody asking for me? No, senor. Holy rat. Oh, the door to the balcony. Well, it's nothing, senor. Only the fan. Why? Well, when the fan is on the door, it blows shut. You're jumpy, senor. Huh? See, you are jumpy. Yeah, well, I'm in a good business for it, but, you know. Tell me, did you ever hear the name Summers? Summers? Senor, in Santo Tomas, is always Summers. Okay. I mean a man named Summers, Alvin Summers. Here's his picture. Take a look. Hmm. 
Ever seen before? Senor, in this heat, it's a strain to use the memory. Yeah, while well, you, uh, you think this might make you forget the heat? Quien sabe, Senor Dollar, it might help. Here. Oh, five dollars American. Gracias. Now, how about it? Si, senor. I have seen this man. Here in Santa Tomas? I think so. Where? How long ago? I don't remember, but I'll try to find out for you. Okay, Benito. That bill I gave you, I've got a few more just like it. If you can locate the guy in this picture, Alvin Summers. Or if you can find anybody who's asking about me. Senor, for that kind of money, I'll not only find him, I'll bring him to you on a silver planter. Item two on expense account, $5 American to Benito the bellboy. Flying blind the way I was in this deal, I figured I needed all the help I could get. And who knows, Benito just might turn something. After he left, I stretched out on the rickety bed and tried to figure out a plan of operations. I had to make myself conspicuous if I wanted the man who'd called the home office to contact me. On the other hand, if Alvin Summers himself was in the vicinity, I'd have to be pretty inconspicuous to stand a chance of getting anywhere near him. Trying to do both at the same time might not be exactly easy. Yeah? Dollar? Well, yeah. Who are you? Carson's the name, E.K. Carson. And I'm sure glad I found you, friend. Hey, you the guy who telephoned and wanted to see me? I sure am. Well, my luck seems to be holding up pretty well. Not too well, I hope. <laughs> huh? Yes, sir. As soon as I saw you check in, I phoned a desk clerk to ask who you were. I says to him, he looks like an American to me. See, I'm in room Wait a 10 minute. downstairs. Uh, desk clerk? I thought you meant that long-distance call. Well, the Britain. reason I hope your luck's not too good, friend, I'm sure hoping to get you into a little cribbage game. Cribbage? You play, don't you? No, I'm strictly the gin rummy type. Oh, I could teach you, friend. Wouldn't take a jiffy. Uh, sorry, I thought you were somebody else. Oh, I... I sure wish I could get you into a little game, friend. Gets mighty lonesome making arounds these small towns. Are you in business here? No, I'm a traveling man. Regional sales manager for hold tight zippers. Zippers? Down here? Sure thing. All a matter of education. As I often say, business is where you find it. Why, half the world is just waiting to be zipped up. Great thought, ain't it? Terrifying. Uh, look, Mr. Carson, if you'll excuse well, what me... What about that cribbage game, friend? Sorry, as I told now, you, Now, I'll I... bet if you just learned to play the game, you'd find out it was a whale of a lot of fun. I'll wait. Well, then, why don't we have us a good talk about business? Look, if you don't mind, I've got a few things to do around oh, here, so... Sure, sure, I know. To tell you the truth, I guess I'm just plain lonely. Daytimes aren't so bad when I'm out on the road, but... Nights, I don't seem to be able to find anyone to talk to. Now that you're yeah, here... Yeah, well, uh, maybe we can have a drink sometime. Say, I'd sure like that. Then maybe we can get up a little game later. Well, maybe. I ushered E.K. Carson, the cribbage king, politely but firmly out of the door. I'd figured him for the man who wanted to talk about Alvin Summers. But all he apparently had on his mind was cribbage and zippers. I ambled on downstairs into the cantina next door. I cut my way through the smoke to the bar and looked around. A few tired-looking characters at the tables, and over in one corner, a little fellow bent over a guitar, eyes closed, and a world all his own. Then I saw the girl. Three stools down the bar from me. But when I looked up again after a drink, she was only one stool away. Hi. Hi. Welcome to Santa Tomas. Thanks. Really something, isn't he? Hmm? That guitar player... I saw you watching him. Oh. You know, those guys give me the creeps. They start playing and all of a sudden they're gone. Real far away. I don't think he even knows there's anybody else in here. Lucky man, huh? Yeah. It's funny. A cheap run-down bar like this. Nobody listening to him. Except us. And he's playing like he's on a cloud. Yeah. There's a flamenco singer like that up at the hotel at night out on the terrace when she starts those wailing songs of hers. She gives me the creeps, too. Up at the hotel, the Playa del Mar? Yeah. Oh, you must be down here to see how the other half lives. Mm, you mean to see if anybody lives in this town? I sure picked me a great spot for a vacation. Pretty dull, huh? Real. At least... It has been. Oh. Say, uh, do you know that guy over there? The American at the corner table? Yeah, the muscle man. 
I sure don't. You uh, certain? Of course I am. Why? Well, he's been staring at us. Oh. Never saw him before. Huh? Mm-mm. Of course, I've never been in here before. Maybe he's the bouncer. He sure looks like he could qualify. Well. Look, he's leaving. Yeah. I guess we made him self-conscious. I guess I'd better leave, too. Where to? Uh, Gloria. Johnny. Johnny. I think I'll go back up to the hotel and change. Then what? I don't know. There's a moon tonight. Got a date? Mm-hmm. Me? Mm-hmm. When? On the terrace. Half an hour. She left, and I sat there a drink or two, thinking her over and wondering what her angle was. I was pretty sure she was interested in me for more than my manly charms. And it occurred to me that it might not be too unpleasant finding out what was on her mind. Especially if it could help me locate an embezzler named Alvin Summers. I went up to my room to change. When I got there, I found I had company. Close the door. Well, my friend from the bar downstairs. I said close the door. Okay. Why the gun? Turn around. Face the wall. Okay. Hands against the wall. Hey, look, what are you... Shut up. Well, if you're looking for my gun, it's under my left arm. Thanks. Now turn around. So what's this all about? That's just what you're going to tell me. What's your name? Johnny Dollar. I'll bet. Cross my heart. We'll try again. What's your name? I told you, Johnny Dollar. You can think of a better one than that. Wise up, Buster. It sounds so phony, it's got to be legitimate. And speaking of names, what's yours? I'm asking the questions. You're answering. Okay, we'll play it your way. What are you doing down here, Dollar? Look, I'll make a deal with you. You tell me why you want to know, and maybe I'll be... Don't play games with me, Dollar. Next time you get more than the barrel of the gun. Hey, look, I don't know what this is all about. Okay, you... we'll cut out the question and answer routine. I know why you're here. Oh? So forget it, Dollar. Drop the whole thing and beat it. Maybe I'll like it around here. Oh, oh. But you won't like it around here anymore, Dollar. You'll learn to hate it. <clears throat> You and that gun put up a pretty convincing argument. I'll give it to you once more, Dollar. Slow and easy so you can get it this time. Go on away. Don't ever come back. If you don't go now, you will never go. There'll be another exciting episode in the story of the Alvin Summers matter tomorrow. Tomorrow night, a threesome on a moonlit beach. A beautiful girl, me, and a guy with a knife. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.